my name is Miriam. Welcome to this channel. Today we are going to paint this beautiful painting that you can see here next to me. And we will be working wet in wet. At least in the beginning. I have masked out the flowers so we don't have to worry about getting paint on them to begin with because we're going to make quite a wet background. So I will recommend that you do that as well. But let's begin to paint. So these are the colors we are going to use. It's turquoise green deep, forest green, olive green, cadmium orange and cadmium yellow. And I'm using my Gensai Tampi watercolors. I've masked out my flowers and uh, the masking fluid fluid is completely dry and we have made some watery mixes of the three green colors and now i just begin to dab it in to the wet paper i just went over the paper with a, a wet brush to uh, yeah to wet the whole paper so we will be working wet in wet and then i just apply these green colors all over the background. I really want a nice and blurry background, so it doesn't matter that much where you put in the colors. We just want some variation in the background. And yeah, so I do it like this. And then I tilt my board a little bit just to make the colors flow. I think that uh, gives a very good effect in watercolor when you do that. And I just allow the colors to flow. And here I'm mixing up some of the cadmium yellow. And I'm just putting that color into the background as well because I've only masked out two of the flowers because I want them to be the focal point in painting but there will, will, will still be <laughs> um, yellow flowers in the background and I just put in this cadmium yellow and actually also the cadmium orange to, uh, yeah, to blend that into the background as well I'm just tilting the board to make the painting flow. And since I'm a very impatient person, I decided to use my hair dryer. But I didn't dry the painting completely, it's still uh, damp. So now I go in with just clean water drops and I drop them into the background to see what happens. And to sort of create some light beams, you can call them. Uh, some coated bouquet effect I think um, and this is actually working very well as you can already see here on the paper so I'm quite pleased with that then I dry it with my hair dryer and now everything is dry I go in and begin to paint a little bit um, negative painting I go around the leaves I see in my sketch and paint in the darker areas here and here you can see I go around a stem and it pops right now because I've painted it darker around the stem and I just do that um, Now I'm going, going in to enhance some yellow flowers in the background. And here I go in with a little bit stronger green mix. It's the olive green I can see. And I paint around the stems to make them pop. And 
here I'm beginning to paint in the actual leaves and I do that with quite a watery mix of the olive green. And I just continue with that. And here you can see all the leaves I've painted so far. Now I'll dry it off with my hair dryer. And then I continue with the painting. Now I'm going to paint some of the yellow flowers. So I just enhance it a little bit and then drop in some of the cadmium yellow. No, orange. Cadmium orange. Excuse me. <laughs> and I'm just enhancing this flower down here with putting uh, green. Uh, underneath it so that will make the yellow color pop and here you can see the reference photo it's nice to have to look at uh, while we are painting in watercolors you almost always build the painting up from light to dark some people prefer to put in uh, the dark colors to begin with and you can absolutely do that, but uh, when you have done that, there's no turning back. So it's a little bit safer to build it up from light to dark. Um, yeah, sometimes I, in the middle of the painting, I go in with the darker colors because it does a lot to how much color you're going to use in the painting means something but along the way you will find your own uh, way what you prefer how you prefer to paint with the watercolors so yeah here um, I was just taking off some colors and I felt like it was getting too dark with the yellow so and I work back and forth <laughs> so to speak um, I work between the green and the yellow flowers. I don't want too much definition on the background flowers. I just want them to be visible so you know that there are yellow flowers, but I don't want to go into a lot of details. I will wait with that to the focal point flowers that I have masked out. When you paint with watercolors, you have to consider that it won't be finished in just five minutes. At least not a painting like this. It takes quite a while. I think this painting took me about four hours to complete. Um, but uh, I find it really relaxing and I love sitting there to paint. And you know, you can take breaks when everything has to dry and then come back uh, if you don't have that amount of time to spend painting. It's always nice to have something to come back to, I think. So, yeah, and here I'm painting in the stems as well. And I'm not going that dark yet. Oh, here, <laughs> just as I said that, I went in with a quite a dark color. This is the turquoise green deep. I've chosen that to be the darkest color in this painting. So here I'm painting in negative space. So I'm painting in uh, between the leaves and stems of the flowers. And these areas can be nice to get in as well because it will help you decide uh, how strong you want the color to be on the leaves and the stems so you could also wait to do this to the very end and just build up your painting as I talked about before 
I would also like to mention that if you have any questions at all, please write them down in the comments down below. I would love to hear from you. And I would also love to see your paintings if you want to share them. I have a Facebook group called Mia M. Thompson Art Studio Community. It could be really great to see your paintings there. And here I'm just continuing to painting in some negative space with the tuber screen deep color. And this is how far I am now with the painting. Continue. I'm making some yellow in the background. And here I'm painting in some more leaves and stems. I'm beginning to darken up the color a little bit. And I just want these small leaves and stem to pop. I want some light areas in the painting and some dark areas and I believe this is the best way to do that. And here I'm painting in a leaf on top on if on top of everything. <laughs> It's quite important not to be impatient when you are doing a painting like this because it takes some time, time to fill out these negative spaces and just to build up the painting. But I do believe that it is worth the while. So yeah, just be patient. And here I'm working around the area where the masking fluid is uh, just to enhance those lines so when we remove the masking fluid we will have some clear lines of where the two main flowers are. And here I'm just painting in some leaves and I'm using my number 6 brush and I'm going from the bottom and up. And this is quite a strong mix of the forest green I'm going in with. And 
and I'm trying to vary the length of the leaves and stems and so I make some long ones and some shorter ones and I do believe that I also uh, use some olive green to make leaves with and some of the turquoise green and now it's time to peel off the masking fluid because we are going to work on the last two flowers I do believe the background is very beautiful it really turned out well so I'm quite pleased with that and now you can see the two flowers so to begin with I paint in the stem and I'm using a watery mix because I want this to stand out and since the background is quite dark the best way to make this stem stand out is to make it lighter than the background And to make the stem look natural, I always put in a bit of a darker color along the edge of the stem. So it will be light in one side of the stem and darker on the other side of the stem. And now I'm working on the flower heads on the lower part of them and I'm going in with quite a dark green. And with these focal point flowers, I'm being a little bit nitty gritty with the details because I want them to have a lot more details than the other flowers to make them stand out in the painting. So I take my time when I paint the stems and the lower part and of course the whole flower. Um, just going back and forth and make sure to keep the light areas and yeah so here I put some of the cadmium yellow on the flower and then I drop in some of the cadmium orange in the bottom of the flower where the flower is at it, its darkest so and I'm working wet in red because I really do love that effect that the uh, colors flow into each other and here you can see me removing some of the paint to create highlight because I felt like the flower was a little bit too yellow. I really want to keep those highlights also because the background is quite light. It's like the flowers are standing in and the sun is shining down on them. So they have to have some light lighter areas and they can can't just be all the same color so and here I'm putting in some of the yellow color on the other focal point flower and I wet the area first and then I go in with the yellow color this painting is still a loose painting but just with more focus you could say on the on the focal point flowers so 
and I really love this about watercolors that you can make something beautiful with the painting loose and not go into all the details you can also make some amazing paintings going into a lot of details but I don't believe I have the patience to do that so I'm quite pleased with a result like this one so I put in color and then I remove some again to create those highlights on the flower I also make a mix between the yellow and the orange so I get a sort of middle color between those two just to yeah make some variation in the flower now I'm working a little bit on the stem the green stem or the lower part of the flower well it's attached to the stem <laughs> you can see and now I'm just drying everything off because um, sometimes uh, when you continue to work uh, and want to make some more details, it's better to work wet and dry. So I do that first, work wet and wet, and then wet and dry. Then when you work wet and dry, you have more controls of control over your um, brush lines. So that can be quite nice. And I use this uh, brush a lot to blend with, so uh, it's not a very pointy brush, this one, it's, I think it's a number three or something like that. And I like to use it to blend on the paper with that, or sometimes to remove some colors. Here yeah, I'm just using it to paint with, and you can see I've mixed up a darker orange. I'm not sure I mentioned that, or perhaps it's just the cadmium orange, or perhaps I put in some red. It could be I put in some cadmium red and mixed up a little bit of a darker orange, because I felt like that was needed. Yeah, I'm just working on the last details now on the painting. Uh, I think it's... It worked out really really good I'm going in with some more of that dark dark orange just to make a little more definition on this focal point flowers yeah I'm just seeing and looking at what I think needs doing that's a, quite a personal preference, I think, and it's always hard to know when you are going to stop painting. But it's a good idea that you can always leave it for a day or two and then come back and see if you feel like it needs some more in some places. And here I'm just doing some splattering with, a, I think it's the turquoise color. Uh, not a lot of splatting, but just a little bit to yeah, create some variation in the background and interest. And um, yeah, here I'm just enhancing some of the yellow in the background. And we have almost come to the end of this painting. I really hope you could use this um, to inspire you and that you can make your own painting now. You see how you can do it. Um, yeah, so that was it from me today. Hope to see you again in another video. Bye for now.